Hi, I'm Jace Lewis. Today I'm going to run through real drum recording and editing using Steinberg's Cubase 9. So this track is called Shields um, and this song was, uh, it began its life uh, as a rhythmic drum pattern first of all. So. Um, very important that, uh, that I recorded the drums first and that that uh, dominated the, the, the patterns and the time signatures of where I headed. Um, this song also in particular is uh, a marrying of organic instruments which is just the drum kit and the synth element of programming. There aren't any real guitars in this so it's just synths and it's just drums. The song um, is uh, based on a subject matter which is typical within this music industry and that is that you're shielded in, you're locked in in your own world creating uh, music and then as soon as you put it out um, it's almost like you know your first child going to school, how well is it going to do etc. Um, and also about the us and them scenario of the music industry also which was uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a, an experience that I've gone through. Um, and in particular with this track as well, uh, there's a music video that's been done for it. And um, I have a very dear friend of mine called David Prowse who played uh, the villain Darth Vader in Star Wars, acting as the main boss. So basically the experiment from um, this group of scientists him being the big boss is an experiment of seeing how something does and then it just takes its own life um, and it runs on its own and they can't really control it and it just evolves, grows, progresses and, uh, and it symbolizes an element of my career and production as well um, within this medium. So these are the uh, drums unedited uh, recorded directly into the door um, and uh, this is the beginning point, the very beginning point, the very start of, uh, of, of constructing a, a, an entire song. Uh, the very first element that I have to edit is the drums in order for everything else to lock in on the grid. Um, and so now I'm going to run through that process. So with Cubase 9, um, in order for you to uh, quantize all of these drums, um, you first have to put them into a, into a folder. Uh, so that when you do edit them, um, they're, they're all edited simultaneously. Um, so to do that, we click up on the first, first track, which is the kick, and then shift and click down to the bottom for, the, for my room. Uh, right click on the mouse and move selected tracks to a folder. So I always now name this folder drums and uh, I also change the color so that it's matching to the drum tracks that I have. Um, and now you'll notice by soloing or muting just at the top folder of that, that it's soloing the entire drum track as we go. Now that I've got everything in a folder, what I want to do is check that everything is in phase um, and this is very, very important with drums because there's multiple mics, um, all the kit is entirely close mic'd. Uh, and because of that, if your mics aren't quite in the right spot, the phase will be out. Um, so what I do now is I'm going to go right through all of these stems to check that everything is in or out of phase and put it correctly with that. So as you can see now, if you go to the snare drum top and bottom, you see snare top, the transient is actually going under and yet on snare bottom, transient is going up. So they're out of phase. Now what this will do is it will suck the guts out of the sound. So when you put them in phase, you get more of the weight, more of the load. Um, and I'll demonstrate how to do that. So we've seen that the bottom snare is out of phase. Um, uh, so that sounds like this. Now you might think, sounds okay, but
but to the trained ear, um, what we do is uh, I get my EQ up uh, and I get my SSL channel strip. Uh, this is by Waves. So on this channel strip is a reverse pol polarity button, uh, which is phase ultimately. And the difference is quite surprising. So this is the snare um, out of phase. And now in phase. Out. In. So the difference is quite a lot. You've got more weight um, and uh, it's not sucking the guts out of each other. So that's phase. The importance of phase um, is that, for instance, when you go to EQ your snare, for an example, you will try to add more and more bottom end in the EQ. You'll try to add a, a bit more 20, 220 hertz or something like that. You're artificially adding a frequency or, or an effect that really is papering over a crack. The problem is that the, the, the phase is out in the first place. So by checking the polarity um, and the transient to see where it is, which is, you know, which is great about digital audio workstations, is that you can really zoom in and you can see that your transient top and transient bottom are not going in the same direction. If they're opposite directions like that, that goes to show that your phase is out. Phase will also be an issue with guitars. Anything that you've got multiple mics on, two mics, you've got to make sure that they're in the exact same spot. Um, and with drums, no, drums are notorious for it on overheads and, uh, and, you know, and snare drums as well. We've got two mics. Um, it's quite a lengthy process to make sure it's got right, but you need to start with that process first and make sure that the, the ground is solid um, in order for you to EQ and, and develop your production further. So just checking through the other parts of the drum kit for phase, um, the overheads, left and right. A uh, perfect example, uh, you can see that the transients here dipping down and going up at the beginning. So, and everything else looks pretty good. So that's our phase all checked. The next process now is to edit and quantize um, the drums. This is a pretty involved uh, section of, um, of editing real drums. The importance of quantizing is to make sure that your drums are snapped perfectly onto grid. Um, I've played these drums and played them to a click track and they're not perfectly in time. They're out by a thousand or, or whatever of a second. So we need to really pull them in on grid um, in order for our workflow to carry on um, and to be perfect on grid so that our production is tight and solid. So we're gonna go into editing the drums and um, for this, we need to um, go into the hit points of each individual um, stem. Um, for this, um, we've not grouped everything, um, so we're just going to double click on the stem. This is the kick drum. You'll notice on the left hand side we've got threshold. What that enables us to do is to help the software to be able to just decipher what is just a kick instead because Naturally, when you're recording any organic instrument, especially drums, everything else bleeds into it. So you've got snare, um, cymbals, and, and kick. So what we do is um, we go in on this part. And this is just our kick drum. And we open up the threshold just to get the hit points of the kick. Now, later on in the song, I have snare coming in. Um, so you can hear snare coming in. Now this snare roll, for instance, if I did bring in the threshold right the way down, then I would be editing those hit points. But for this, I just want the kicks. 
So we're avoiding our transient here, and we're avoiding these also, which are snares. So we're just focusing on the kick. Uh, now we're going to the snare drum. Double clicking on the stem again. And again, our threshold is down to zero. So you've got this line right in the center here. And you can see our snare hits. So um, the threshold is on zero, bringing it up from zero to that point there. It's almost a quarter of the way. This is bypassing kick bleed, cymbal bleed, hat bleed, toms, everything. We just focus on the snare. Um, so you can see that the hit points now have picked up perfectly for my snare. Sometimes, for instance, when you have a roll, the velocity of the drummer isn't consistent. So it's best to always check these little flams or rolls as they're rolling in um, because they start soft and then they get hit. They hit harder with the excitement. So it's best to always check that to ensure that the threshold hit, hit points are met. Um, and on this occasion, they're fine. So, um, so we've done the hit points on the snare and the kick. Now focusing on the hats. Uh, the reason why kick, snare and hat is because the quantized window that, that uh, Cubase brings up prioritizes three items of the kick. Um, and these are really the two main elements of the drums anyway to keep time. So you make sure that these are priority anyway. Make sure that they are the fundamental parts of the kit that you're getting in time. Everything else then will lock in place, which I'll demonstrate on the group quantizing later on. So I'm just going to check the same on, on the hi-hat here. Um, loop that and zoom in and get the same on the hats. So again up to the threshold, up to the threshold here. Now there are multiple different thresholds on, on this. So essentially what we want it to do is pick up the main elements and it will lock those into place. And I can really zoom in later on meticulously and get into the, to the other parts and pull them in on, on grid. So right now we just want a, 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 the, the fundamentals of the kit pulled into to time. And that's the hats done. So that's all the hit points selected. So you'll notice that I've just focused on the kick, snare and the hat as being my three focal hit point selection for the entirety of the kit. Why have I done that? Well, Cubase, uh, the quantize window that I'll bring up shortly, um, allows you to have three main elements as priority. So when those three main elements are prioritized, which is the kick, the snare, and the hat, everything else is simultaneously sliced at the same time. And this is the importance of why you have your whole uh, drum stems uh, gone to a, 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 a group folder. So when you select the group folder entirety in its entirety and the entire um, kit is then selected, the slice, will, the slice tool will slice the entire kit and snap everything into place on the grid. So the quantize window um, picks up kick, snare and hat. Um, when I record uh, everything in, in order, um, I start with a kick and I then go to snare, snare bottom and hat and then I do toms, toms, tom one, tom two tom, and then floor. So um, all my overhead and rooms are done last and at the beginning is kick, snare and hat. These are my main parts of the, of, the, of the entirety of the kit that, uh, 
that are important to 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 get into into sequence. Um, you start with a kick, and then the hat, be, uh, and you start with a kick, and then the snare, because they're the two main elements of beat that you hit consistently all the way through. Um, and the quantize window will pick this up and put that in order for priority. Now we're going to enter into the slice uh, function of the quantize window from Cubase. Um, now uh, the importance of grouping all the all the drums together is for the benefit of slicing uh, everything at the same time. Now to help the quantize window to prioritize just kick and snare and hat, I'm going to select my hat channel. I'm going to move it directly underneath my snare top stem. So I've got kick, snare top, and hat. Now what we need to do is go into our group folder, select all, and that now selects all of my drums only. Now that that's selected, we go up to the quantize window. For that, we click on the right hand side of this triangle, and you will see that it brings up all the lines for the hit points that we did earlier on. The important thing to notice here is kick, snare top, and hat are the three prioritized um, elements that need quantizing, and you can see that they've prioritized the kick as the most important, and then in sequence, snare top and hat. You can change the uh, priority, um, you can make them all important if you wanted to, um, by increasing the stars uh, on the selection within this quantized panel, and, uh, and that just really makes sure that everything is absolutely on snap on grid. So I've got my offset to zero. Um, this enables me to make sure that the hit points are right bang on the transient. Um, and this enables us to uh, be sure that the kick is smack on the grid um, for just the ultimate timing, essentially. <clears throat> so if I was to play you um, the kit prior to me slicing, um, you will hear that it's slightly out with the click track. So the snare is a little behind, the kick is slightly before, um, it's all a bit loose on timing. Um, so now that all our hit points are selected and we've got our quantize panel and the offset is zero, what we do is go to slice. And that has now sliced the entire lot up right from kick to the very last track, which is uh, room mono. Um, and we then go to the bottom part, which is quantize, select that, and that then pulls everything on the grid. Um, and the difference is quite telling. So here it is quantized. So here the odd pop and crackle here and there, that's because um, when quantized, it causes these gaps, uh, which is a good symbol of that it's done its job because it's pulled the audio, it's, it's sliced the audio and pulled it and that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of how far out some of my playing was earlier. Um, but we will be crossfading that later on and they'll disappear and I'll show that part later. So I'm just going to analyse um, a little part here. So we've got the kick and the snare. And that's all on grid, so that looks good to me. And 
Now, as you can see here, it hasn't picked up the hit points of that. That's probably because the um, velocity of that when I was hitting on the hat was just so weak um, that uh, that the it would have um, be a detriment to the to the hit point selection. So an easy thing to do there is to go in manual, and this is something I like to do. Time to time. So I lift up the waveform, and I can see that my transient is here. Now I've gone into selecting the scissors, and I've cut that part. And again, so how we know this is a transient is when you zoom out, you can kind of see that the, the transient starts to break up and create the waveform, which is not. And what we do is select on that, that pulls it in. Now, the beauty about that is that you can see that the grid is here underneath. So I go up to here, this is my snap properties, and I select the audio, and it snaps it onto the grid. So this will really ensure that the, 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 the hits are smack on the grid as we like. I can see that this hat is also a bit loose, so take snap properties off and this gives you the free reign so that the cursor doesn't snap to the grid. Put it here onto the transient. Zoom back out. And now that hat is perfectly in time. Absolutely perfect. More perfect than ever. same problem. Now the problem we have here is that the bleed of the China symbol is picked up in the hi-hat. So it's had a bit of a difficulty in being able to distinguish the transient of the China symbol bleeding into the hi-hat start. So this takes a little bit more involvement. So I'm gonna assume that's a pretty good signal. Well, that is my transient right there. And again, the same for this hat. Snap properties back on. Back on. Now this will only ever really work on hats in between a kick or a snare strike because they're the most important things. So say if that high hat was landing on a kick, then what you need to do is scroll up and make sure that the kick is absolutely on point with that. So that is m the most important thing over anything that's overheads. So now that that is all done, we then go to our quantize panel. If I zoom in on a section, get the quantize panel up, and crossfade, you'll see it knitted all together, just like that. If we play back, there will be no gaps, no pops, no squeaks.
Perfect. Now that everything is cross-faded and knitted together, um, what I now do is I go into my library of snare drums and kick drums um, that I've done previous uh, on this session, and I like to trigger up the snare. So I'll grab the snare um, solely just on its own, and I will place that underneath my snare drum and copy and, and paste that all the way through. And that just basically strengthens up the snare and the kick. Um, so just like this. Take group off. And snare top. So basically what we do is I go into my, my library. There's several ways of doing this. For me, I'm just going to open up a new track audio make sure that it's uh, mono and that is now underneath my snare drum uh, what I do then is drag in my snare so that is my snare drum that I recorded earlier just on its own and this is going to help now prop up the snare and make it sound even more solid. So you can see I'm placing the snare underneath each every other snare that I've got. So we, here we have a problem where we've got kick first and snare later. This is a kick snare issue. A lot of drummers play kick and snare simultaneously and never ever get it in time or hardly ever in time. Now <clears throat> if the snare was first and the kick was later we could just pull in the kick to pull on top of the snare and because it's being triggered up it'll help the weight of the kick. But you can't be selecting a snare and pulling that around because the, the phase will be an absolute nightmare. So what I'll do on this situation is try and find the best kick and snare land that I've got. So, so there, right there, right next to it is actually the best kick and snare. It's quite close. So for instance, say that is my best kick and snare together. I will then go back to the one that isn't so good. It's miles away. Because I've got snap properties on, I've copied it. Make sure I've got kick. And it's replaced it. Now the problem is that, so the China's landing on it, so it's no good. So what we'll do is find one without the China land. So. And that's that one there. we've already knitted this together previously. I select the whole thing and press X and then that knits it back together again. So that resolves our kick and snare issue. So our sample rates and pick back onto grid our snares and 
and this helps. He's got another bad kick and snare again. So you see how that snare then automatically jumped to the next one? That's because our grid is on eights. This is a sixteenth. So what we wanted to do So you can hear now the snare, the real snare and the sample snare, which is ultimately the same snare, is directly underneath. <clears throat> and this helps further the production for EQing um, and, uh, and just giving that snare even more weight. So we'll do the same now for the kick. So again, let's create a new track, audio mono. Call that kick sound. Go into my library. So I'll pull in a kick drum that I have processed earlier. Again, copy and paste with your snap properties on because we know that the kick has been edited and is perfectly on the grid. We then support the kick even further with the pasting of this as we go along. And again, we just check the phase. Good example, there are a phase. Trans end up the top, which is my original kick, is going up. Trans is underneath, is underneath. So we go into channel strip, get my SSL. Loop this. So that's out of phase. Let's put it in phase. So that's in phase. Out of phase, sucks the guts out, in phase, strength. So they are now perfectly in phase.
it's starting to hear that there's like a, a big production starting to take form. Um, and uh, this again just helps the enormity of it, the width um, and the directness of, uh, of the sound. Okay, that's all we've got time for now. Uh, see you at part two.